Hey, everybody. Um, I guess I'm next. So uh, my name is Dustin Morrow. I'm an um, ER physician at Global Medicines for the most part. Um, I'm the division chief for emergency ultrasound and director of medical school's efforts. But before that, I was a very uh, poor resident who couldn't afford clear bliss or couldn't afford uh, blue phantom phantoms. So I started using ballistics gel, and that's actually turned into another company uh, that I designed them professionally for. We're going to do the low cost, like easy to do ones. Um, okay, so first of all, why phantoms? The main thing is most patients don't like to be stuck multiple times, practice your ultrasound skills on them, and they're like, well, where, where's my needle? All right, I'm going to stab you now. Most patients get kind of nervous with that. Um, we're going to go through the options. So again, so why phantoms? Your novice learners through um, workshops, through being able to do sim, can attain the same level as your uh, as your experienced learners, so it increases their confidence and their competence. There's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of uh, uh, food-based products. There's Jello, um, which is pretty sticky and messy. There's bologna. There's spam. There's rack of ribs. I mean, all these things you could potentially cook afterwards. So I think that's the main upside with the uh, those things. But you can't really reuse them, and you hope that your class is one day and like done and throw it out. Because otherwise, if you leave this in your car, it smells really bad. So that's why I quit using. Uh, that stuff. There's a lot of different things out there. They they go through lumbar punctures. They can do thoracic. They can do anything with uh, phantoms. So there's actually a good compendium out there uh, curated by the Ultrasound Training Solutions in Australia. So there's a DIY phantom compendium on every body part imaginable how to make your own ultrasoundable phantoms. So uh, and our papers are in there there a couple of times. So again, so if you have a bunch of money and you're like, eh. T my time is more valuable than the money that someone's giving me, which I don't, um, and most of y'all don't if you're here. Um, then go ahead, you know, buy the professionally made ones. They're you know easy. You get them done, and then whenever you're done with them, you just throw them away and then buy more. So it's a very expensive model to use um, for that. So whenever I was a resident, like I said, I was trying to train the nurses to do ultrasound IVs because I was getting asked to do them every day, and I still do. But I and I like doing it. But at the same time, I want. Uh, to teach other learners how to do this, so I just didn't have the budget for it. So I was thinking about Mythbusters whenever I started doing this. Um, you know, Google, most of the Google searches were the chicken breast or the, uh, you know, uh, gelatin mold, and I was like, there's got to be something out there that's more um, easily usable. And I found ballistics gel. There's recipes online for ballistics gel. There's companies that make it, and we actually started out with a company called Clear Ballistics. I like that it was um, clear so my users could look down after they did their ultrasound and like, hey, you missed this. And they're like, why did I miss it? It's like, your needle tips through it and on the side. Just look. And you can start seeing through the material. This is a detailed recipe how-to sheet. We'll show you in the back how to do this. It takes all of about 30 minutes to make this. And you can make about 20 at a time um, in no time. So again, for the most part, the blocks of gel that we have back there come clear. We use tubing to make vas vascular lanes. You can change the size of tubings. When I was first doing this, I went to Lowe's, and Lowe's had these really thick kind of uh, hoses, I guess you'd call it, for refrigerator parts. And um, they're a little bit thicker sonographically, but um, you can also use, uh, there's a place called latextubing.com. It's also in your recipe book. And uh, you can get custom sized tubing. You can get like 0.1 millimeter wall diameter and a you know two millimeter, this thing? And then a uh, two millimeter um, diameter for peds vessels. You can get up to eight millimeters. You can get central access type things. And the cool thing about this, as Phil was alluding to, is that if you cut it, if you dilate it, if you do a whole central line approach to it, if you dissect or do practice cut downs, you can just reseal the stuff and it, and it heals itself with heat. So we fill the vessels with fluid. And this is kind of what they look like. On the left is your uh, commercially available 500 buck one. Um, and on the right was the kind of the hoses from Lowe's. Um, we uh, since then I've been using you know thinner stuff that you can actually get to look exactly the same as this. So it's a little dark as all phantoms are. Whenever you're using ultrasound, you have to turn your gain up really high. Um, but they all come out pretty nicely. You can trap the needle very easily. Um, this is uh, just a paper, just re restating the point that the more that you let people sim, the more you let people actually use phantoms, the better that they get on their actual patient outcomes. So again, looks a little less nice, but still gets the job done. We actually had a trial versus uh, Blue Phantom versus homemade stuff, and we did a pre and post group. Uh, on the left is the pre-training, the light blue, and the dark blue is the post-training. 
and that's just their success. We had 30 medical students did a uh, five minute or did a time trial for them. They did five successive attempts. We measured their time to access and their uh, success rate percentage, um, and, and of course pre and post training, whether they were trained with a blue phantom or whether they were trained with a um, clear, you know, homemade phantom was about the same. This is their time to cannulation went down. And for the most part, students, you know, felt very uncomfortable beforehand and they felt much more comfortable after, afterwards, regardless of what kind of trainer they got. That's me.